In the three years, 2003 to 2006, when as elected rector of the University of Edinburgh, I chaired the university court, I was conscious, surrounded by the Rayburn portraits in the Rayburn room, that Principal Robertson and others of the Enlightenment looked down on me with benign tolerance. On the other hand, Sir Walter Scott could not conceal his distaste for a DL. This disapproval originated in the frictions of some 150 years before. Scott purported to be a friend of Sir John Graham DL, polymath and zoologist, who had written the rare and remarkable Animals of Scotland, and many books on flora and fauna, and had indeed been a teacher of Darwin during his time at Edinburgh University. Scott actually had stayed with DL at the House of the Bins for some days, but subsequently, writing quickly, doubtless to get Abbotsford out of debt, he wanted a villain and 17th century General Tam Deal would do. Scott was unflattering. He talked about Deal as the inventor of the thumbscrew, who would roast his enemies in the oven at the bins. The Deal family were not amused and told him so. The ultimate insult was Scott's assertion that at least John Graham of Claverhouse had table manners. Tam Diel did not. But, Lord, take us in keeping. What a set of ghastly revellers they were that sat around that table. My good sir, Kent many that had long before gone to their place. There was the fierce Middleton, and the dissolute Rothes, and the crafty Lauderdale, and Diel, with his bald head and a beard to his girdle, an earl's hall with Cameron's blood on his hand, and wild Bonshaw, that tied blessed Mr. Cargill's limbs till the blood sprung, and Dumbarton Douglas, the twice-turned traitor, both to country and king. There was the bloody advocate Mackenzie, who for all his worldly wit and wisdom had been to the rest as a god. And there was Claverhouse, as beautiful as when he lived with his long, dark, curled locks streaming down to his laced buff coat and his left hand always on his right spool blade to hide the wound that the silver bullet had made. He sat apart from them all and looked at them with a melancholy, haughty countenance, while the rest hallooed and sung and laughed that the room rang but their smiles were fearfully contorted from time to time, and their laughter passed into such wild sounds as made my good sire's very nails grow blue and chilled the marrow in his bones. <laughs>